everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today is all about speckles. I have some acid dyes mixed with citric acid powder and we are going to create two different really fun speckled colorways. One of them is going to have a pastel base with then that same color of dye speckled on top of it and then the other will have a pastel base with different colors of dye speckled on top of it. I know that this is something I have done in the past, but I'm not sure if I have highlighted it specifically in a video, and I get a lot of questions about this, so I thought it was great to finally turn it into a video. The three colors that we have here are Pink Orchid, Tangelo, and Golden Poppy, and I'll link to the video where I mixed these down in the video description. And one of our colorways will have a Pink Orchid base, with pink orchid speckles on top. And I think for our other colorway, I wanna go for a light yellow base and then maybe use some of all three of these colors and potentially also some black on top of that one. I am pre-soaking some Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon and then also some Swish DK, which is 100% Superwash Merino. In addition to other video resources, I do have affiliate links for a lot of the tools and equipment that I use in my videos down in the video description. So it's always worth checking that out. But I have been pre-soaking this in plain tap water for about 30 minutes. Pink Orchid is a beautiful, beautiful pink. It is not the best at staying in a stock solution, so you always wanna make sure that you shake your stock thoroughly. But I'm gonna go for, I think approximately 30 milliliters of a 1% stock solution of this pink orchid acid dye. And you can see the cloud that there are like some particles probably in there. In this pot, I have 32 cups of water with no acid yet. And we are on the countertop because it is cold. Pink Orchid, again, is a color that strikes so quickly that I want to get more even coverage on the yarn if I can. I'm now coming in with my 300 grams of Swish DK, adding the yarn to the pot and sort of lifting and lowering it to help the dye access as much of the yarn as we can. Now, it's okay if we get something that's a bit more tonal, but the technique of starting with no acid, a super large volume of water, will help that coverage just be more even overall. And if you want to get some amount of color all over the yarn, this is what I recommend. Okay, and since we have 32 cups of water, I'm gonna add eight tablespoons to have a concentration of two tablespoons of vinegar per eight cups of water. And just stir this up quickly. Okay, and now I'm gonna take this over to the stove to heat everything up. We used so little dye here, so that way when we eventually go and try to speckle on it with our pink orchid dye, the speckles will still show up. And since I'm gonna be speckling in an immersion steam pan, we will get some spread from those colors. And so that will potentially deepen our base pink a lot, but we probably won't have any white left over because we've got pretty good coverage right here. For our yellow, I'm also starting with a 1% stock solution. And this is of Brilliant Yellow. And honestly, because I didn't mention the brand, I don't know if it is Jacquard or Derma, but both brands have a primary yellow that I really, really like. And I think again, I'm gonna start with 30 milliliters of this 1% stock, which would be 0.3 grams of dye total. In the pot this time, since it's a smaller pot, I only have 16 cups of water. Okay, and I've got our stroll. I'm trying to, to just separate the yarn a little bit so it's not mega clumped. And again, we have no acid in here yet, but you can see how bright <laughs> this color is. There is a fair amount of pigment in here just with uh, this ratio and proportion. And again, it is okay that if we end up with white patches, but my goal with our setup here is to get some amount of coverage 
all over the yarn. So that's why we're starting cold, no acid. But since we have 16 cups of water, I am gonna add four tablespoons of white vinegar. Depending on your tap water, you may find that you need similar or different proportions of acid to water than what I use here in my videos. So that is worth keeping in mind. But now I'm gonna take this to the stove and we're gonna heat it uh, until the water is clear. So probably, well, it's gonna take some time for the pot to heat up. So we'll check back in on both of them in probably about 30 minutes. Whenever I speckle yarn, whether it's on a countertop or an immersion steam pan, I always move the yarn around to look for white patches. And when I'm doing that, it's not as much that I'm looking for spots that are still white, but I'm looking for large patches of color that are uninterrupted by speckles. Because I don't want all the speckles to be on just half of the skein, I want there to be some distribution of it throughout the skein, which is why I flip and recheck over and over. So today when we start speckling, I won't be looking for white patches, I'll be looking for blank patches that'll either be pink or yellow depending on the colors we started with. So some areas with less color are totally fine, but when you have three or four skeins in a pan, you might need to just flip and check to make sure you got the coverage that you wanted on the yarn. It has been 30 minutes, so let's check on our pretty yellow. It looks like all of the color is in the yarn. So I am going to remove this from the pot. Ooh, I do see some nice tonal variation. But instead of the side to cool a little bit. Now let's check on the pink. I don't need it to cool. Oh yeah, that's all absorbed. I don't need the yarn to cool completely or anything, but I would like it to cool at least a little bit so that way I can comfortably handle it. Plus I don't have the next pot set up. If I did have the pot already set up, I could move this directly into the steam pan. We're actually gonna reuse some of the water from doing our tonal stuff. I could have dyed the tonal yarn in here, but ultimately we aren't gonna want that much water in the pan. So that is a big reason why I did a kettle first for the first step. But since one of the burners is still a little warm, that's why I came and added a little bit of water at first. And so I have arranged the yarn so that way rather than being like an O, it's sort of on top of itself and moved, moving it out a little bit so we get some nice access to it. I do wanna add a little bit more water. Uh, and again, this water has a proportion, move some of that water down, of two tablespoons of white vinegar per uh, eight cups of water. And so there's enough that if I move the yarn, we can see some liquid at the corner, but the yarn is mostly at the surface. And the yarn is, was still warm when I put it in. It was cool enough that I could handle it, but uh, <laughs> now we're gonna get ready to start speckling. So I'm gonna go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. This is the equipment I use whenever I am dealing with dry dye powder. And I'm gonna reduce the heat to low because you can see how steamy we are. Okay, and I've got the pink orchid dye in this spice jar. And I am gonna just start adding some speckles. Very lightly. I think even though the speckles are going to be heavy in spot, I'm not going to try to add it all over the whole yarn, but just in some little areas. It is a little bit harder oh, to get towards the edge with some of this, but we'll do a little bit down there. Okay, put the lid back on and I'm going to zoom in to just show you what it looks like. There, these are very soft, subtle speckles. We could have some spread of color around them and giving some deeper pinks, but ultimately, because we have the same color as the base, it's going to be extraordinarily subtle, which is fun. But now I think I wanna wait five to 10 minutes before I flip the yarn to continue adding some speckles on. Tone on tone speckles like this only really works when you are dealing with a 
more pastel color. Uh, and that is because if I had started with a 1% depth of shade or one gram of the pink orchid dye per 100 grams of yarn, the pink color would be so intense that if we did the speckles, you might still see it, but it would be a lot harder to see and observe than what we have here, where because we used 30 milliliters of our 1% stock solution, that's 0.3 grams of dye per 300 grams of yarn, or a 0.1% depth of shade, which you can see is still a lot of color. There's still a lot of pink there. It could have been even more pastel, but I really like this contrast. After 10 minutes, I flipped the yarn and then added some speckles to the other side. Continuing this process, waiting five to 10 minutes before flipping the yarn and adding more speckles. As I'm moving the yarn, I'm looking for large areas that look like, you know, there's a foot or two of yarn with no little speck of color. And sometimes it can be hard because speckles can land on just one side of the yarn and not the other, but I don't want the yarn to feel unbalanced and to feel like, oh, we only have speckles on the first half of yarn, but not the last. And so this is just what works for me. But what I'm doing here when I'm moving the yarn and checking is looking for, this time it's not white because we've got the pink pastel base, but I'm just looking for those blank patches that I feel like need a little bit more something. Once I was satisfied with the color coverage, I added some more water to the pan and then let the yarn heat for 30 minutes. I flipped the yarn a lot more times than I think I had originally expected that I might, mainly because I kept finding areas where I'm like, oh, I want a little bit more and a little bit more. And I think that there's a lot of the colors sticking to one side of the strand of yarn and not the other. And so then it can look like Oh, there's not a lot. And I mean, ultimately, this is not a heavy speckled colorway, but the speckles are absolutely there. So I'm gonna set the yarn aside to cool so we can wash it. I removed some of the liquid from the dye bath, but otherwise, this is the same water, and I'll be putting that same water that had the vinegar and now residual citric acid in it. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna go ahead and use black, or if I'm gonna stick with the three more sunset colors, I think it'll depend a bit on how things go once we start uh, speckling. But the dye mat is still warm. I'm adding enough water so that when we move the yarn, we can see it at the edges. But it should heat up pretty quickly. And sometimes I may end up taking uh, like a turkey baster or something to add a little bit of water around the edges if I feel like the water level is getting low. But let's heat things up and start speckling. Okay, I think I do want to add a little bit of water. We absolutely could pour, but the reason why I like to do around the edges and corners is sometimes if we have a uh, dye powder on here already, then uh, we will intentionally be spreading those colors. So let's start with the golden poppy because this is the color. Oh dear. That is the most likely to be a little bit subtle on here, but I definitely can see it. So that is good. <laughs> I put the lid back on and shook it to help dislodge that clump of dye that we had. And this is the Tangelo. And then I'm gonna come in with the pink orchid. And some of these colors are on top of each other, some aren't, and that is fine. Uh, the Tangelo definitely spreads uh, more than some of these other colors. But anyway, this time you can clearly see the speckles from the pullback. And there's a lot more contrast between the tangelo and the yellow, the pink orchid and the yellow, and even the more golden poppy color. And if I had tried to use brilliant yellow speckles, it wouldn't show up very well because it's just not that pigmented of a color. But anyway, I am going to wait 10 minutes and then we'll flip the yarn 
to add more color to the rest of the scheme. In the past, I have used these shakers to try to get extremely heavy speckles on yarn. And the speckles may look heavy, but then when you pick up and move the yarn, because sometimes the dot is just on one side of the strand, it doesn't feel that heavy on the yarn itself. We may see spread each time we flip of some of these colors as they sink into the yarn a bit. And so our yellow backdrop may end up feeling much more orange by the time we finish the colorway. And that is okay. I think that if I wanted to make sure to preserve the yellow base, uh, I would probably do countertop speckles waiting in between each flip so that way we could avoid spread. And actually I do have a video where I did this. I did a yellow base with light speckles in green, orange, and black. I waited five to 10 minutes in between each flip and then added more of all three colors where I felt it was needed, bringing in some more water from the turkey baster as I saw fit. But once I was satisfied with the color, I added a bunch more water to the pan. There's plenty of acid in here. We're adding more citric acid the whole time and we had the residual citric acid from the pink set. And then we let it heat for 30 minutes. It has been 30 minutes. So I'm now going to turn off the heat and we are gonna start removing this yarn. It feels very almost flame to me with the yellow with I mean, it really, even the pink feels so orange on top, but the speckles are way, way, way more dramatic here. But anyway, we will let all this yarn cool as well, and then we'll wash everything. Let's wash our yellow yarn first. I'm not expecting to have any color bleeding in either circumstance, but oh, this is so fun. You know, I was debating colors up until I started filming, and I did consider starting with a pale gray. And I feel like actually looking at this, I can see the difference between the pink uh, and the other colors. But I think that if I were to have done gray, you it probably would have been a little easier to see the difference between some of those colors, especially since like Tangelo is a pinky orange anyway. So adding yellow just made everything more flame-like. I don't know. I really, really like it. I just added some plain dish soap. Plain dish soap. Clear dish soap. And we're not seeing any bleeding here. So I'm going to rinse out the soap and then we'll start washing the next one. Next up is the pink where our speckles are so much more subtle because we did tone on tone. But the main difference between this and times when I've used this yarn, or sorry, these, these acid dyes, the citric acid powder, uh, to speckle on just white yarn, is that the overall character of the yarn tends to feel more pastel in that circumstance. Because ultimately, if we have a little bit of color spread, it's gonna be very, very subtle compared to here where we didn't use a ton of dye, but we still added a lot more uh, than we did with the speckles. But once again, we have no color bleeding. So I am going to go ahead and finish rinsing out the soap from this one, put everything through my spin dryer, and bring it up to dry. The pink tone on tone, the pink orchid speckles on the more pastel pink orchid base is really fun. The speckles are unquestionably more subtle. Uh, it's very soft and we'll just add little pops of, of dark to whatever you make. The base itself is also tonal, so there's variation in there already, but I think that this is just pretty and fun. It's a whole lot of pink, but I like it. While this works and I think is lovely, we could push the pink base color a little bit further to still see the speckles, but ultimately since this pink orchid is a bright color, but not really a dark color. At some point, it would start to be really, really hard to see the speckles on it, unless we were going with speckles that were a different color. When it comes to our yellow, the base color is pretty bright. And I think that it would be really, really hard with this depth of shade of the yellow if we had some brilliant yellow speckles we were trying to do on top of it 
it would be really, really hard to see them. Granted, that isn't something I tried. So if you want to see me try to do yellow on yellow speckles, or just speckling with yellow on its own, let me know and I can try that. Uh, some yellows, especially like the golden poppy, or I don't remember the golden color we used, those do start to look fairly orange when they're concentrated, even if they're more yellow on their own. And yeah, that's something that we could explore further if you would like. I would say that that golden yellow color is the most subtle of all of them. So if we wanted to have something feel a lot more subtle with this, that may have been the way to go versus uh, the brighter orange or the pink on here, which have a lot of contrast and give it this like flame feel, which I like. It just, the yarn, even with similar amounts of speckling and everything, just feels so, so different from the pink on pink. I'm really, really glad I ended up not using black on this base. I love the fiery feel, the light and bright that I got here. And while black would have been pretty, it just would have taken the whole colorway in a different direction. And so having options, but deciding to stick with your gut, I'm very glad I went that way today. This isn't really a comparison video as much as it is showing two different ways that you can play around with speckles on a paler base that you start with. If I wanted to have a more firm comparison between just using one color of speckles versus three, I could have used pink for the base on the fingering weight yarn and then layered those three colors on top of it. But I really wanted to have an example where the base was different from all of the speckles versus one where it was similar. I also could have just picked only the pink speckles to do on top of here, but I really like how all the colors came together on it. Removing the pink and the yellow from the equation, uh, consider the overall technique. Do you like speckles that contrast more or speckles that are more subtle? Uh, what are your preferences? And what kind of combinations would you like to see me play with more? I honestly really, really enjoy both, probably for slightly different reasons and for slightly different applications, but I would absolutely play around with both of these more in the future. And yeah, I guess it's just amusing to me that a lot of times when I am doing speckling, I play around with a white base versus dyeing the base first because I think that I enjoy seeing how much different colors spread. And that's something that's easier to understand when the base otherwise would be white because you could see, okay, if we did that with these colors, we ended up with like a pastel blue base or a pastel pink because something was spreading a bit. And that can be fun, but this is fun too. And so I'm glad because I get this question a lot that I finally did a video specifically focusing on dyeing a pastel base and then speckling on top of it. So if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, turn on notifications and Again, let me know in the comments what other kinds of color combinations I should use. I do have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, where almost all of the yarn that I dye in my videos ends up. Uh, go and check out all of the yarn. A lot of times you can even get sneak peeks on videos that have not yet been released by looking at some of the newest listings. Uh, I can't guarantee that these colorways are still available, but there are hundreds of other colorways available in my shop, and it's a really great way to support the content here and, well, make space for more yarn for me to dye. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.